get us here, um, just small information about the why we are selling for now, because this will change. But if you get the logic, then it doesn't matter how the wine will change, which grape we'll use, which color uh, it will be. The principles are the same. So if you understand the principles, the ideas behind it, information behind it, then it doesn't matter whenever, whatever wine we change into. So I can imagine none of you really drink wine intensive. You know, we have divided the wines, the, the wine part of the cards, in three or four components, uh, categories. So you have the white wine, red wine, the rosé, and the bubbles. The rosé is not the really spectacular, so we just have one now. It's the rosé d'Anjou. I can tell you now already, it's kind of on the sweeter part of the wine spectrum for the rosé. So if they are asking, have you dry a dry rosé? And so will be probably not. But for now, we just have the rosé d'Anjou region Danju, it's really well-known region. For the white wine, we have on the cards, as you can see, eight bottles. From which, five, we serve by glass. How do you remember and recognize wine? There is four ways we can get wine. Uh, the initial way, how we do is like aligned with the supplier with the beer, our drink supplier, we have the wine supplier. They call it the in-house in wine uh, supplier. That's Heineken has uh, Alton and Bullen. That's another wine house, but if you find their wine collection nice and you have worked with it before, you're familiar with it, you can choose to go uh, get the wine there. Third way, you can buy it from restaurants, uh, grocery store like Sticro, Hanos Macro, they have a wine house collection as well. And then fourth way, which most Chinese entrepreneurs do, whichever where is a discount, we buy it. They will just sell white red rosé. Because it's on the car white red rosé, there is no specification about grapes, where it comes from, which price category, which we get, whatever whatsoever, so they can go their route and follow it. If you go out and dine somewhere else, you see some of those brands, then you kind of already know which other wine they have also. Just by seeing one brand, you can see more. Because it's collect, it's like a collection of wine. We have Wall Garden and Sax, that is uh, the in-house for InBev. So everyone that has InBev and works with their in-house wine supplier, they will have those brands. So this is the package we're working with. Obviously, they have way more wine, like Wild Bath and Sutton, like, I don't know, four, 500 different types of wine. Just um, within a spectrum of price range, obviously, we are on the really low end of the, uh, cheap end of the spe spectrum of the price range. In our new cars, we'll have even more than Carino, even another grape with the rest. So there is another specific. So before you have drunk, 1,000 glasses, you probably won't notice any difference between them. Some of your palates, taste palates, has to, has to get used to the tannins and the tastes uh, that is within the bottle for the wine. So as well, the more often you drink it, the more you say, oh wow, I'm paying 6 euros for this really good quality. But that is only and only after you drink a lot. So it's not only you if you find wine disgusting in the beginning. How to serve it which way to serve it, and, and which order. If you pour it in the restaurant, the hospitality business is always below the bubble. You can see where the glass turns the corner, as it were. Uh, it's like kind of below. That is how we serve it. Technically, it's like 170 ml. The only thing you have to do, just make it. Uh, how do we call it? Uh, scarf. Yeah, scarf. Like yeah, exactly. Round. Why? Because you don't want the drips from the bottle to get down the, uh, to get at the bottom of the bottle and get on the table. Same way for here. You don't want the drips of red wine to get on the foot of the glass. It's First you put in between the index finger and the middle finger, the next one will go to your 
pinky and the ring finger, then you add on to your index, another middle finger and the ring finger, and the next one goes to the thumb and the index finger, and then you can build more. We have a bit of feet. So always confirm the order because someone is taking up the order and someone else is maybe serving it. If it's just you, then you should know what it is. The old bottle of wine which you had previously like 10 years ago, not every bottle was with a spoon like this you can open. So they wanted to taste if the pork taste is also transferred in the wine. So, Actually, more modern days, the white wines, they don't even need to taste it because it's a lid you can just open and close. There will be a transfer of taste. So that's most of the time just a formality you do. Okay. The tricky part, because it's a high table for me, if it's a low table, it's easier because you can really press it. So this will be tricky, so I'll have to lift them. It's not allowed actually, but I can lift. Uh, but if it's lower table, you can just press the bottle really firmly. The principle is you have to cut the lid here, just above the rim, open. But the trick is without moving the bottle. Do you want to put in the screw? Try for the center cork exactly, and then you. Hold it firmly, you still show the label, and now you go in, just until when you can't anymore, you'll see when it stops. This is another tricky part, so the first lift is okay, then the second lift, you should be careful not to get it out in one go, and slowly turn it. Old to young. So you start with the mother, then the daughter, then the father, then the son. But in one exception, the one that tasted the wine should always be last because that person is the host. And also here, I have the bottle shouldn't touch the rim of the glass. Yeah, uh, one sip. Yeah, just one sip. It's enough. Then you start the order as mentioned before. So, so it's like grandma. Female. Your mother, daughter, then it's always grandma. In, supposedly, if it's four person, try to do it as fairly as possible. But since we're not really that, you know, high end of restaurant, people don't even expect us to know this at all. But it's nice to that you know what it's supposed to be. What we have here. Is actually a blend wine. Chateau Gatopel. When you score, uh, when you know the bottle is old, we have just one bottle that is really old, but nothing else. So be careful in the future, just for yourself. Don't pour everything out. Just, uh, let it remain a little bit, so you, you are sure you don't pour residue in. Wine tasting and like tasting, everything is all the senses. So uh, the first thing is the sight. You look at the wine. And you'll see for yourself if it's really clear or really heavy. You'll see, we'll pour those things as well, we'll pour those out as well. You'll see the difference in color already. So that's your first sign of the wine. Um, tend to be uh, because it's a blend. You already know there's more things in the wine than it usually is. So it's, it's a, com a wine with complexity. As transparent it is, the more complex the wine. Same goes for white wine. The next thing you're gonna do, and that is what the, the first thing you all notice, everyone swirls the wine. Why do we do that? It hasn't been in contact with oxygen. Liquid or solid stuff get in contact with oxygen, the flavor will change. And that is how you um, actually get the flavors out of the wine. We we'll tend to smell the wine. First, you swirl, then try to notice the smell. What is the lag? When you swirl around, how fast does the oily part go down the glass? Um, again, the more alcohol there is in it and the more complexity the body uh, has of the wine, the lag will be longer. Get air in, 
so it's even oxidized and then you get oxygen in your mouth while with the wine so the tannins really wakens up and if you try to taste it try to swirl it around in your mouth so every uh, taste. Part, taste bud of your tongue will get a sense of the wine so smell because now you're making a story complete the initial smell the first day, second, the swallow through, then the, the t uh, smell again to align every taste it's supposed to be. This one is easy to drink. Say, people always tend to say Chardonnay, but the Pinot Gris, is, Pinot Gris show is really nice. It's actually, you'll taste in a minute, yeah, more sweet and it has l some kind of spark, sparkling in it. But it's more on the sweeter side than on the dry side because sushi is acidic and really uh, salty of the soy sauce. That is why you combine it more neutral, fatty, sweet wine instead of dry. We have Javisa. This is another thing that goes with sushi. I did research and this one is really recommended everywhere. It's if you taste it, actually just a more uh, refined version of the Pinot Grigio to me. It's also really sweet for a white wine. And it has a small level of bubbles. If you want really dry wine, we have the Pinot Gris and that's really dry. German white wine, white white wine. If you had watched the video, I want the smallest amount of homework to kill. What's the first thing that comes to mind? Yeah, to be honest, I can't really tell. I don't drink that much red wine. We do. We do. Oh. Mm -hmm.